before proving, going over various things that you got to make sure that you get your own mind right. You get your own, you get yourself, uh, your own spirit right and grounded in the truth before you think, before you even think about proving somebody. So read what you got. Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. We all got, we all have to have a firm foundation before we, individually, before we think that we're going to be able to enter into a marriage and be right. Read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 12. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end, and much study is weariness of the flesh. So it just lets you know that there's going to, I mean, this, this scripture just lets you know, should have just started. Just read 13. That ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. 13. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So it says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, the end result of why we in this life. Read. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So individually, all of us got to have that. Of course, any, whether you're single or married, you got to have this in your mind. The most important, the purpose of us being in this life, the purpose of us breathing, living, is to keep the commandments. Our first and foremost priority is fearing God and keeping his commandments. When we wake up in the morning, that's what we should be thinking about. How are we going to keep the commandments? How are we going to correct our, our sinful ways and make them line up to the word of God? That's our first and foremost priority. Read. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Because everything that we do, the Most High is, 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 written, is written in the book, and we're going to we gonna have to give an account for what we did, whether it's good or evil. So we got to make sure that every, no matter what we do, we got to make sure we're sincere in what we're doing. We're sincerely seeking the righteousness, which is, commit, which is the God's commandments. That's our whole duty, our whole goal. So before you even think about, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this sister, I'm looking at that brother, you need to, your mind needs to be right. Because if your mind ain't right, you don't need to be looking, seeking to get married. You, got, you still got work to do on your mind, making sure that you're sincere, making sure you're rooted in the truth. Uh, from, from there, go to 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So we read, we, read this, we read this a lot. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with this scripture. It says, examine yourselves. Pull up that definition of examine. So it says, examine yourselves. What does it mean to examine? What does it mean for us to examine? The definition of examine. Inspect someone or something in detail to determine the nature or condition. Investigate thoroughly. Uh, make it bigger? Open them, uh, them uh, the, uh, what you call them things, Sin synonyms. Synonyms. Inspect, survey, scrutinize, look into, study. So you, you have to study yourself. You have to, in, it says in, in the front of the definition, it says inspect in detail to determine their nature or condition. Meaning you examine, when you examine yourself, you, 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 you're looking into the reason why you do certain things. If you're sinning and you're in the midst of sin, you're doing things, that's, you, you got a, 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 co a covetous spirit. You see certain things and that covetous thoughts come in your mind. You got to examine it to see, okay, why do, why do I think like this? Why do I do this? Okay, and what the scriptures say about it. I need to correct that. You examine yourselves. There's another scripture in Sirach where it says, prove yourself that you may know what, so you know, I'm butchering it, so you know what's good, for your, what's good and what's evil for yourself. That's what you do when you examine yourself. If, you, if you're not examining yourself, you don't, you don't even know yourself. How do you, how you even have a thought that you're going to go and get married? You're going to go and prove somebody, but you don't even know yourself. You don't even know that you're doing right as it relates to keeping the commandments. So examine yourself. Expect in detail to determine their nature or condition. 
So when you examine yourself, you have to set apart time to actually sit down and think about your actions, your ways, the things you've done, and compare them with God's laws. Because if, you, if you're not doing that, you're not, you're not really examining yourself. You got to set apart time and examine yourself. You have to set apart time and examine yourself. Read on. So well, it says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Examine, so you, you're inspecting thoroughly to see if you are in the faith. Pull up that definition of faith. An allegiance to duty or a person. Fidelity to one's promises. Sincerity of intentions. Belief and trust in and loyalty to God. Belief in the traditional doctrines of religion. Firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Complete trust. Something that is believed, especially with strong conviction. A system of religious belief. Read that one, that person again. Allegiance to duty or a person. Loyalty. Actually, read 2B. Firm belief in something for which there is no proof. No, so the last part of that, we all know that it's proof. That this, that this Bible is real that we read. But for those that don't believe, this is this, you, you have a firm belief in something for which there is no proof, meaning evidently most people won't, most people can't see it just by looking. You can read the Bible, most people can't see the thing uh, physically, so to say. But we believe in it, we believe in it. So you, you examining yourself to see that you are doing the things that are written in the Bible. Because we know that the Bible is a true book. We know that the things that were written were inspired by the Most High God. He put it on the hearts of men. They wrote it so that we can get ourselves right. So that's a firm belief. And pull up the definition of prove. So examine yourself. Inspect yourself thoroughly to see whether you are in the faith. And it says prove your own selves. Which is going into us knowing, knowing ourselves. You have to really, really sit down and think about the thoughts that you think, the actions that you that you take and you make. And this is all things that you should be doing before. You, it's one thing you come into the truth and you marry. Now you just gotta you you gotta get your mind right. You gotta get yourself right as you get in your household right. You gotta do both at the same time. But when you come you in this you in this truth single. Take advantage of you being single and get yourself right first. Not saying that you're not going to desire to be married. Not saying that you're not going to desire to have a wife. You're not going to desire to have a husband. But your main focus needs to be getting your own mind right. Because the minute you, once you get married, now you have you now it's going to start a process of working on being one flesh. Sisters, make working on being one man with your husband. That's the that's going to be a next step, and that's going to be a battle in itself. Like the scriptures say, there's going to be trouble in the flesh. So it's best that you take the necessary steps and get your own man right while you are single so that when you when you do start proving you get married, it's easier for you to fall in line with those things that, that are required of you as a husband, as a wife. Uh, pull that definition up. Prove to establish the existence, truth, or validity of as by evidence or logic. So, so you asking, so when you're examining yourself, whether you be in the faith, what are you doing? Do I believe? Do I believe? I say, I be, I say I'm an Israelite. I say that I believe that I got to keep the commandments. You're looking to see, okay, am I keeping the commandments? Because the evidence of your faith, the evidence of you believing is that you're going to keep the commandments. But if you are doing things, if it's, certain, if, it's a certain, if it's certain things that you're battling with and you see yourself not even making an attempt to correct it, your faith is weak. You got to strengthen that. You got to start focusing on the Find the scriptures that deal. If you battle lust, you need to find scriptures that deal with lust and meditate on them so that you can uh, weaken that spirit of lust. So when that lust rise up, you know the scriptures to apply. That's what, that's what you have to do individually first before you even think about getting married. And for those that can't, you come in married, okay, now you got to work in overdrive. You got to still correct that spirit within yourself. Because remember last week we read in Ezekiel, I think it was 4 or 14, said even, even though, though, though Noah, Job, and Daniel were in it, they had, they, they uh, 
which one? Uh, what is it? Uh, Ezekiel 14 and 14. Let's read that real quick. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, said the Lord God. So whether you whether you are single and you 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 building your spirit up or you married, you only gonna deliver your soul by your own righteousness, by you keeping the commandments. Of course, you, you your your actions, and you had to keep in mind, your actions is gonna influence. It's going to influence somebody into keeping the commandments or it's going to push somebody away from the commandments. Because if you're acting like a demon, like a devil, and you're being a lion all the time, everything is, a, everything is rah, 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 you just show no mercy, you're going, to throw, you're going to push people away from the truth. So you have to get your own spirit right. You have to know yourself. If you, got, if you battle an anger spirit, an anger, an anger spirit, you always uh, zero, to, zero to 100, easy off little stuff, you got to work on that. You got to study scriptures that deal with your anger. You got to study scriptures that deal with temperance, controlling your spirit. You have to build you up first. You got to get your mind right. Uh, pull that definition of prove back up. Prove. To demonstrate as having a particular quality or worth. To show oneself to be worthy or capable. To test the truth, validity, or genuineness, genuineness of genuineness of genuineness of to test the worth or quality of. So when you proving yourself, you you testing yourself. You testing to see, okay, am I do I really believe this Bible? Am I really willing to do what this Bible is telling me to do? Go ahead. Especially to compare against a standard. Sometimes use up or out. So it says to compare against a standard. We all know that our standard is the Bible. So when you first come in, when you come into this truth, that first year, sometimes maybe even two years, depending on what type of spirit you battle with. Depending on what type of spirit you battle with, if it's one of them strong, heavy demons, homosexuality, different things like that, those, those spirits are very strong. You battle with that, it's going to take more than a year for you to get your mind right before you actually go to the next step of get proving a friend, proving a, a sister or brother for marriage. Those are strong demons that it's going to it take time for you to get that out your system. Uh, go, from there, go to Romans 12 and 1. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So Paul says, I beseech you, therefore. I, be I beseech you. What is he saying when he says, I beseech you? Pull up the definition of beseech. Beseech. <laughs> ask someone urgently and fervently to do something. Implore. Entreat. So notice it says beseech. He said, I beseech you. So it says, he says, ask someone urgently and fervently to do something. Meaning, did Paul say, I beseech you, therefore, brethren? This is an earnest thing. It's something that's very serious. And he says, ask him. Remember, the scriptures say, we're not lords over the flock. We can't make you do nothing. But we're going to strongly urge you. This is strong urging. This is very important. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Read on. In 12, and, uh, back to the Bible. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. We all got to remember, don't none of us deserve to be here. It's by the most high mercy that we actually seen the truth and was able to start back keeping the commandments. Because the things that we did before this truth, we deserve death. We deserve to be put to death. But the most high showed us mercy, and we here today learning about our history, learning, learning about the commandments, getting our life right. Read. That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The end of that verse is, is very heavy. It says, it's, this is your reasonable service that you offer your body as a living sacrifice. Your reasonable service. I mean, that's the least that you could do. 
is offer your body as a living sacrifice. Pull up the definition of sacrifice. Sacrifice. An act of slaughtering an animal or a person or surrendering a possession as an offering to God or to a divine or supreme supernatural figure. Offer or kill as a religious sacrifice. I'll read that first one again. An act of slaughtering an animal or person or surrendering a possession as an offering to God. So when you're sacrificing something, you're giving something up. You're giving, a, you're giving something that you, you desire, something that you like doing, something that you enjoy. You're giving it up so that you could do what the Most High God uh, required for you to do. I thought it was another definition in there. Read, the, uh, read 12 and 1 again. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we have to get it in our minds that, yeah, we, we, we have things that we enjoy doing. We have things that we got going on. But ultimately, the, our first priority has to be God's laws and his work, his people, the nation of Israel. Not saying that we're just going to cast everything that we do to the side, but it's going to be, when you make a sacrifice, that's not, the, think about it, when, when we were sacrificing bulls and goats, them, them bulls, we were putting them to death. That's painful. So a lot of times we're going to have to, you, you got to get it in your mind that sometimes you're going to have to do things that you don't feel like doing. That's not convenient for the timing. We have to get that in our mind. That, that's a, that got to be a part of our mindset before you even think about going into the proving process. Because now it's going to be husband and wife. So there's going to be times where certain things come up within the marriage. You might not feel like doing it, but for the sake of your husband, for the sake of your wife, you do it anyway. But ultimately, first and foremost, singly, you got to understand, okay, it ain't just about me, 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 me. We nation building. So you got to have it in your mind already as a as single that I'm going to have to make some sacrifices in this truth. And that's your first, because that's whether you married or unmarried, that's your first priority still. For, first and foremost, your first priority is the Most High God laws and his people, his nation. So everything that you're doing should be, surround, to be, should be surrounded in, I'm doing this to build up my nation. I'm be doing this to rebuild, reestablish the nation of Israel. That's what your mindset has to be before you even think about proving a, a brother or sister. Uh, from there, go to Hebrews chapter 11 and 1. And when you, when you, when you are proven, what you looking for? I think I, I mentioned it briefly the last class. You looking for their faith. Do they really believe? You don't want to be proving somebody and they got one foot, in the, one foot in here and one foot in the world. They still going to the club. They still getting high. Still drinking and getting drunk. They still revving. They still doing things that's other world. They got one foot in here, and then on Sundays, they sat, Saturday they at the Sabbath, Sunday they in the Christian church because they not sure, they not sure what they believe yet. Sound extreme, but that's how that's how a lot of our people in, the, in mentally they might not be physically at the church, but they mind still there. So you have to, if you ain't if you if you didn't take the time out, you come into this truth single, and you ain't take the time out to get yourself rooted and grounded in this truth. You're going to be looking at a brother or a sister that got one foot in here and one foot in, the, in still in the Christianity because your mindset's still on Christianity. So you're not looking for a, a wife or a husband according to the scriptures. You're looking for it according to your past lust. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So this is just letting us know right here, plain and simple, that faith, you're going to see somebody faith. Faith ain't nothing that is just is hidden like, ah, you, you know, maybe that. No, you're going to see somebody's faith by what they do. Like it tell us, like it say in Sirach 32 and 24, he that believeth in the Lord, take it heed to the commandments. You're going to see a person's faith. Let's pull up that definition of substance. Faith is evidence. You're going to see faith. 
somebody believe, you're going to see it. If they don't believe, you're going to see it. They're going to have the signs of unbelief because they're not going to take God's commandment serious. Pull up that definition of uh, substance. Read the second definition, 2A and 3A. Substance. Ultimate. Ultimate reality that underlies all outward manifestations and change. So it says the, it's an ultimate reality. So Nate, now faith is the substance, or now faith is the ultimate reality that underlies all outward manifestations and change. You're going to see somebody's faith. You're going to see if they really believe. But if you ain't grounded yourself, you ain't got no faith to even see that because you ain't been keeping the commandments yourself. Uh, 3A. Physical material form which something is made or which has discrete ex existence. Uh, now pull up evidence. Evidence, an outward sign, indication, something that furnishes proof, testimony. So evidence, you're going to see it. It's going to be evident. It ain't going to be nothing that's hidden that you got to guess at. You're going to see somebody's face. So if you're single in this truth, you got to be, you got to get yourself grounded first, first and foremost. And that is you'll prevent yourself from being double-minded, where you wishy-washy, where you, where you, you, you want to prove this brother, you want to prove this sister, you want to prove that sister. You're not, you're going to be sound in your judgment. You're going you gonna to know, first and foremost, you're going to understand and clearly know who you are, what you're supposed to be doing, so then when you do, uh, decide to prove somebody, you're going to know exactly what you're looking for because it's going to be governed by the scriptures. It's going to be governed, governed by God's commandments. Of course, of course, it's going yeah, to be certain things of, that you like that's outside of the commandments, but the, the, the main thing that you're looking for is the commandment. Is, they, is this person keeping the commandment? That's the, that's the, main, the, the main outlook. Yes, you got likes, you got uh, sisters like to go to the movies, do, do certain things like that. Yeah, that stuff may play. That play a little bit when you prove them. But no, nah, that's not the meat. Those, that's, that's, those things are neither here nor there. You could do with it. You could do without those things. The most important thing is that you and the person you're trying to prove is keeping the commandments. That's the most important thing. The most important thing. Some other things, go ahead. That's, that's very heavy with the officer bringing out. Very, very heavy. Man, I hope y'all paying close attention because, you know, okay, we all at one point was in darkness. Come out of the world, right? Um, now we in this light. We in the truth. So the scripture, matter of fact, give me Ephesians chapter uh, 5, I believe it is. Ephesians 5. Turn up green. Because what he said was super heavy. The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Uh-huh. For ye were sometimes darkness. Read it again. But ye were sometimes darkness. Uh -huh. But now are ye light Read. in the Lord. Read. Walk as children of light. So it says, for ye were sometimes darkness. At one point we all was in, in the world. But it says, uh, but now are ye light. So now we in the truth, right? Keeping the commandments. Then it says, Walk as children of light, meaning act like you're in the truth. Walk like you're keeping the commandments. So, what's always brought out, when you come into this light, this truth, your initial goal, he read, I believe it was the opening scripture, which is Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments. When you get yourself right first in this truth, and you decide to, all right, I think I got myself to the point where I can grow up, where I need to be. I want to prove something. I'm interested in the sister. Or vice versa, the sister is interested in the brother. You at that point should already know what it is you're, you desire. Yeah, in the world, you probably used to date tall guys. Yeah, in the world, brother, you probably used to date what's it called, voluptuous or thick sisters. But guess what? Your mind got to be made up when it comes to proving somebody. What are you looking for? Somebody that can guide you. In the scriptures. Man, what are you looking for? Somebody that keep the commandments. When you go off, they can, hey, my Lord. No, that's okay. You off right there. You don't, listen, you want somebody that can, let's get, uh, 
that can show you in the, in the law where you're going off at. That's what you need. A lot of times, brothers and sisters be looking at the wrong thing. Man, she, she ain't light-skinned enough, or she ain't dark-skinned enough, or she ain't thick enough, or she too thick. Can this person correct you when you go off? Do she keep the commandments? Do he keep the commandments? All that, well, it ain't worked out because he stayed too far. Or, you know what, I'm a, I don't want to prove the sister no more because, you know, she, she, oh, she, she wear that same hair wrap. Hair, 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 hair. Like brothers and sisters be having the most dumbest, dumbass excuses you ever hear. They come, in, they come through these doors playing around. But guess what? We don't know how much time we got. So y'all need to stop playing games. Take heed to this class that's coming out. It's very heavy. I had to speak on it because he said he made a point. And I can vouch for that because when I first came through the doors, no lie, all jokes aside, coming out of the world, you know, I was accustomed to a certain type of sisters, certain type of foods, dressed in a certain type of way. Coming through the doors, what I saw, and I didn't know who my wife was going to be. I didn't know. But when I saw the order of these sisters come out the, at, at the kitchen presenting food, they get shalom and they bow down. I said, what the hell is this? What is this? Oh, man, I'm in the right spot. And then the scripture start coming out. You know, correction start coming out when I go off. I'm going to leave it at that, but pay attention to what this officer is bringing out. Mute my mic. So, real quick, because we're uh, running short on time. Go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, and go to verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But faith ain't nothing that, it's not a, just a thought that's in the air. It's not just a poof of smoke off faith. And you just talk about it and keep going. No, faith is a substance. Your faith is shown by what you do. So it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Meaning, if you're not keeping the commandments, you're not pleasing the Most High God. It's, simple, it's as simple as plain as that. Read. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Meaning, that you know and you understand that when you're keeping the commandments, first and foremost, that's your, that's your priority. You know that from you keeping the commandments comes you getting the kingdom. When the Most High do come, come and execute judgment. But if you're not keeping the commandments, you're going to be judged with the other nations, with the wicked nations. Read. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved. So it says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. During Noah's time, it had never rained. But Noah was told to build a boat because it was going to be a flood on the earth. Noah believed by what? He built the boat, but what, what the guests believed, the people he was telling, they didn't believe him. So it was only eight souls that were saved. Read on, read. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. It says he condemned the world, letting you know that he was telling the people that it's a flood coming on earth, but they didn't believe him. Because then the, the, the grass, the thing, all of the livestock crop was watered from the ground up. So this is the first time they had rain. Read. And became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. So it shows showing us that faith is, you can see faith. Noah showed his faith by building the ark. He showed his faith by building the ark. So when you go into that proven process, you're gonna save yourself a lot of heartache if you if you if you you will save yourself a lot of heartache if you get it out your mind. Oh, she looked good. Oh, she's a red bone. Oh, you know what? She's dark and chocolate, dark and sweet. No, get, the, get those carnal things out your mind. You should be looking, okay, what work is she doing? What work is he doing? Is he, has he been sitting amongst the body four or five years not doing nothing? He's still a brother, been with us four years? No, you might not want to prove that brother. Same thing with the sister. She's just sitting back. She's just sitting back doing nothing. Come, come to the Sabbath and leave right when class over? No. What? What are they doing for the truth? What are they doing to push this truth forward? Because it's deeper than fringes in the border of blue. What work are they putting in? What work are they putting in? 
that's the basis of when you're going into proving something, proving somebody. Go to John, First John four and one. I know I got I got to end. First John four and one, the book of First John chapter four verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Just because a brother in here with princes on in the border of blue, that do not think that do not mean that he believes. Just because a sister is in here with modest apparel and she got friends on in the border of blue, that does not mean that she believes. She could be in here just to get a simple brother to pull him up out the truth, pull you right back in the world. Next thing you know, you back smoking weed. You back going to the club every week, going to the strip club. Same thing, vice versa with sisters. It's brothers that come in that, that's looking for a silly woman to lead astray. Got to be watched. So read on. It said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Read. But try the spirits, where they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Try the spirits, whether they be of God. The only way you can see if a spirit is of God is if they're keeping the commandments. And they're keeping the commandments sincerely. And that's what you're you looking for. Okay, this brother been here two years. He's been here a year. Okay, He's been here two years. What is he doing? Because we all know when you when you become a you have to be with us for a year consistently to actually be active in the, any any other offices, committee, things like that. So after that year, the, the brother or the sister getting their man right, did they did they have they been? Because a lot of times, a lot of a lot of a lot of the brothers and sisters actually be asking before that year comes. So when that year comes, they are already on the ground running because they've already been inquiring. They've already been seeing, hey, what, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And then when that year hit, they already been, they already been inquired about a decorating committee or uh, being a part of the kitchen or don't being any. They, they've already inquired. So once they hit that year, okay, when do I start? They are already ready to get that ground running. But those that don't really believe, they, I'm just here. I'm, hey, good class. They just hear to hear a lovely song, and you will see it by their actions. After that year, are they getting involved? Is the brother is the brother staying after helping clean up? What are they doing to show their faith? Because it's deeper than it's deeper than the fringes, the beard. It's deeper than that. You gotta see the actions of their faith. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.